We are 18 holes away from crowning a U.S. champion. Welcome to Madison, Wisconsin, and Elver Park, where the best women in the world will compete for the 2022 USWDGC Championship and that trophy right there. And it's going to be a fantastic day of disc golf. We are in the fourth and final round as we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Hi, everybody. I am Charlie Eisenhood alongside Brian Earhart and the two-time U.S. champ and Hall of Famer Valerie Jenkins. And look, we've seen some amazing performances from this lead card so far this week. As we look ahead to this final round, what are you expecting today as the pressure mounts to the maximum level? Well, if it continues to be the lead with our lead car, these top four women, this will be one of the most prestigious wins they could have in their career. Of course, everyone recognizes a world champion, but a national champion, that is a huge honor to win. Haley King, Evelina Salonen, Owen Scoggins, Maria Oliva going to be battling it out today, Brian. As you kind of think about the storyline of this group that we've watched so much this week, what comes to mind? I mean, a couple things, but to be to be quick with it, number one, the, the future is here. These players are not on this lead card because it's a fluke. They're here because they have extremely well-rounded skill sets and incredible strengths that they're leaning on this week. And also, the long putting is, is here to stay in the FPO division, and it's phenomenal to watch. Circle 2 putting has been a big story, and Evelina Salonen back up on the lead card, and a big reason why is that her putting has been so much sharper than we've seen earlier this season. She is just looking confident. I mean, if you have any doubts in your putting abilities, you're not going for putts like that. Just that fear of missing and having to make a comeback putt, that scares players away from being aggressive when they see the basket or they're on the putting green. And it was putts like that, looking away and cashing it in the chains. She trails Haley King by two strokes heading into today's final round. Maria Oliva was the big story early in the tournament, looking absolutely dialed in at Token Creek and taking the lead through two rounds, Brian. Well, diamonds are made under pressure, Charlie, and I think she's putting herself in a position to either take down a victory or take down an incredible learning experience. She's been giving herself these opportunities all year. This is her chance to showcase what she's got and hopefully push through to a championship this week. The putting has been on display for Maria. But yesterday, during round three, in our first round at Elver, started to have some trouble off the tee. Yeah, I mean, you get into these woods, you start getting a little panicked about your shots not going where they're supposed to go. You get some roll bounces off into the really tough rough on this course, and bogeys and double bogeys can creep up on you pretty quick. And she really just didn't take advantage of these short, hyzer par threes, but she's throwing the disc really well with the driver. And she's having a good week off the tee for the most part. She had built her lead to four strokes, but a couple double bogeys down the back nine. Now she's trailing Haley King, who's been averaging 995 rated golf this week, has been the most consistent of the players on this lead card. Yeah, and it's the perfect time to start peaking in this tournament. Yesterday's round, Haley looked so comfortable on her tee shots and where she really started to shine was when we headed into these thick, very technical woods. Look at this massive drive on the par four, making our chase cam turn around. Massive drive to set herself up for an eagle. Here's the putt. It wasn't an easy one, but under pressure, Haley King made the shots happen. 459 foot par four. The Madison locals going crazy for that one. You never see eagles on that hole. And she now leads this tournament, chasing her first major championship. It's going to be a fantastic week. Youth movement, too. We talked about it already. We've got so many young players in the chase. And all of the players on this lead card looking for their first major championship in the open division on U.S. soil. Evelina has won over in Europe. Paige Pierce, not the story today. She is in sitting in 21st place, might have her worst ever major finish. So get an opportunity to take a look at Haley King coming out to the course. And we've got the same lead card for the third straight round. That's the first time that's happened at a major since the 2015 European Open where there were just 16 players in the field. Valerie Mondahano. 
will be taking the tee as part of the chase card in just a moment. Mondahano, six shots back of King after shooting a seven under yesterday. You know, I'm not quite sure what it is about this hole, but a very small percentage of the field parked this hole. We're not seeing a lot of bullseyes on this simple 250-foot uphill shot. There's got to be something to it that we're not seeing. Nerves of the opening hole, perhaps. Katrina also at 20 under, six shots back of Haley. There's a solid shot up the hill. I think it's just the uphill is a little bit deceptive. It's hard to get the discs flat, especially if you're throwing hyzer flip. Only two bullseyes on the entire field yesterday on this hole. Katrina has been excellent in final rounds. We'll see if she can put pressure on the lead card. Hannah Blomroos had some of the most impressive shots out here at Elver yesterday. She'll be putting from the edge of the circle. And to complete our card, Sai Ananda. Sai Ananda still bogey free. Longest streak in FPO this season. That's not bad at all. That's about 15 feet right of the basket. So the chase card will head up the fairway, and we're going to send it down to our on-the-ground reporter, Terry Miller, who's standing by with the PDGA's Rebecca Duffy. Good afternoon, everyone from Elver Park. Terry Miller checking in with our PDGA's own Rebecca Duffy. And Rebecca, we're seeing the chase card go out. Everybody's chasing down that title. Some have already captured a title here in Madison today. Yes, out here at Elver, we crowned Jennifer Allen as our FP40 champion. Uh, the other courses, we have 19 champions for this, for this, 19 different divisions. And speaking of a lot of divisions, you can enter any division of, of the, you know, you could do FPO, FA1, juniors at our WGE. Every division is offered for women. So make sure you sign up for a WGE event. If you don't have one near you, then find a tournament director or take that initiative and, and be the TD of one of our WGE events. We've made it simple. We've made players packs that you can order. It's going to be a great fanfare, and we're expecting a 1,000-plus women across the world. Yeah, and that is of the international and virtual uh, version, so to speak, as people will be able to compete from all around the world. As you said, we have that coming up. That's going to be in the first week of August. That's the Women's Global event. And then also, we've had a ton of support. You see the gallery out here, but a ton of support here locally in Madison and throughout Wisconsin for our women players here this week, haven't we? Yes. Uh the amount of spectators that have come out to support these ladies is beyond our expectations. And not only that, we have a vendor village over there with uh, Ladies First and Kim Birdie. Um, they, they have their goods over there for sale, and they support Ladies Disc Golf tremendously. So if you get over to our vendor village, if you're here and if you're watching and you're close, come out to our vendor village. Have fun. Watch these ladies and, and see how disc golf really can be played. <laughs> All right, well, we're here for everybody. Come on over to Elver Park for Rebecca Duffy. I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy. We're going to get onto the course and bring you the rest of the action as we conclude here on Championship Sunday. Thank you, Terry. And 
women's global event, such an awesome part of the season, coming an annual event. Sayananda lining up her birdie putt. And wow, that was a lot longer from the basket than the camera gave it. Definitely not 15 feet. This is edge of the circle. And leading into this final round, I would consider all four players on the chase card within a shot to move up. Maybe there's a slim chance that we can see a winner out of the chase card, but these players need to take advantage of every hole. When they have a look at birdie, they need to give it a good run and, and try and score because they're going to have to play relatively perfect if they want to chase down our leaders. Not there for Henna. Those are the kind of pots that are going to be critical today for really all of the competitors, but particularly those on the chase card trying to catch Haley King. Katrina in for the birdie. It's already a better start than yesterday. Now just five shots back of Haley King. There's just not a lot of room for error on a course like this. Every hole is reachable for birdie, so you have to make each shot count. So the rest of the chase card set to tap in for par. And the birdie pressure is out there today. Katie Alsalu already making some moves from the third card. Two for two to start her round. And everybody is chasing this woman right here, Haley King. Two shots clear of the field, getting warmed up and ready to go. We'll be back with more action from the final round of the U.S. Women's Championship coming up. It's an evolution for the game, and it's exciting to watch, and I can't wait to see what golf is going to be like in the next five, maybe even a year or two. Like, it's going to be way different than it is now. I believe that there are a lot of good things in the future to diversify disc golf and to expand disc golf and to make sure that disc golf grows in the way that builds communities all over the world. Because ultimately we are connected Boy, with a piece of plastic. That's what blows my mind. We are in love with a piece of plastic and it's flight. After 46 years, I'm still playing. It's about the love of the game, doing the best that you can. And when you can, bring somebody into the circle, bring somebody in, because if we want to grow this sport, that's what has to happen. Welcome back to the Disc Golf Network's live coverage of the U.S. Women's Championship. This is a beautiful hyzer down the hill. She really just needs to get distance. And again, if you're just tuning in today, this is a shorter par four. A lot of the holes on this course are shorter, even the par fours, and you just need to put yourself in good position to attack the green. Yeah, and there's a lot less out of bounds than we typically see on tour, but placement is key if you want to score. Just set yourself in the right spot. Valerie did a great job of positioning. You just want to keep away from those bushes. It's a very tight angle on our second shot. Yeah, on this hole, being where Henna is, she's going to have to throw a really tight turnover into that little pocket where the basket's sitting. Valerie being in a much more textbook position here. Sayananda following 
Valerie Mondahano's drive. Let's take a look at our course close-up about Elver Park. Just such a fantastically balanced course. One of the most popular courses in the Midwest, but definitely Wisconsin's most popular course. 12,774 rounds scored on UDISC in 2021, and there's good reason for it. There's a fantastic mix of par fours and par threes, elevation change, there's tight woods, there's slopes, there's a beautiful off the hill shot on hole 18, which is definitely the signature hole. Definitely worth going to play the course just for that shot. What a fantastic finishing course for the major. Thank you to UDISC for this course close-up. And everybody trying to catch Haley King. I don't, I don't try to <laughs> but not Jennifer Allen, who won the Masters 40-plus title earlier. And uh, in dominant fashion. Of course, still a very competitive player in FPO, but opting to play in the Masters division. and. Another fantastic performance from one of the longest throwers on tour. <laughs> Ultimately beat Melody Bailey by 10 strokes. So this is that blind turnover I was talking about. She has to go up over these bushes to a blind green. And these bushes are not thinned out, that's for sure. To throw it 60 feet in the air on an angle and have it land on a side hill. It's a technical shot, but she dialed up that distance just right. She's going to have a great look at her birdie putt. Near circle's edge, uphill. And look at Katrina down there. She's lined up with that gap. And she could see the pin, more importantly. I mean, how patriotic. Look at these outfits. Hope everybody's having a great start to their 4th of July weekend. We might get some fireworks early today. That's what Katrina's hoping for anyways. She's parked for birdie. Looking like she's about to go two for two to start her round. And she's averaged nearly 1,000 rated rounds in the final round of Elite Series and Majors this season. She continues to put the pressure on even when she's out of contention. Certainly not the case today. I remember a phenomenal start to the final round at DDO this year when she was battling against Kristen. She went six for six to start the tournament, and that is not an easy course to have that happen on. She definitely has found a way to dial in that focus. Beautiful shot from Sai, using that hill and the slope as her backdrop. Slow down the disc speed. Valerie Mondahano also in great position. And just a poor release from the standstill. That was just a complete misfire. Um, Really nothing to say about that one. Let's take a look at Val's Keys to Success, presented by Black Ink Discs. This is Putter's Paradise. If you can get your drives near the pin and you can look at the basket, you need to go for those shots. I think the controlled drives on these longer par fours, and specifically when we get to the back nine, controlling those tee shots is going to be crucial to your success. And there's birdies galore. It's the player that can rack up the most birdies in today's round, eliminate the errors. That's the player we're gonna see at the top. Val's Keys presented by BlackInkDiscs.com, the premium disc golf store. So Valerie Mondahano, who was the closest off the tee shot, ends up 
deep in the bushes. We'll see if she can punch out to save par. There was a lot more scrambling in round three compared to the two rounds that the players played over at Token Creek. The woods are just so thick on either side of the fairway. And like I said, there's no out of bounds, but throwing your shot in the woods could force you just to have to pitch out and lose a stroke. Hannah missed from about this distance on hole one. going to be another par for Henna. This for par for Valerie Mondahano. So she is in for her second straight par. She remains six shots back of King. And then that course close-up you were talking about. This is a ski hill in the winter time, so there's plenty of elevation on this disc golf course. And Sai has a death putt here. She airballs it. She could be 30 feet long. Just undercommitted. Just did not go for it. Potentially thinking about exactly what you were saying, Val. Trying to remain bogey free, needs this. She has an opportunity to set the longest streak in 2022, MPO or FPO. Keeping it going. Much better commitment that time from Ananda. And finally, Kat to start two for two. She's in, and she's now just four shots back of Haley King. Lead card will take the course when we come back. Leopard 3 is stable. It's want to go straight all day long. That's why I love it. It feels good in my hand. It's just very comfortable to grip. Just throw, it's going to fly straight for you. And I love the plastic. It is beautiful. Look at this color. When you have a pretty dish like this, you just want a birdie, right? You're up next. Stay turning. Uh oh. Oh no. Ew. Wow. Alan so inbound. That's exactly. She, I mean, Unbelievable. Yes. Whether you know it or not, you have a brand, and we have discs. Let's put them together and make something really cool. We've got plenty of discs and are ready to stamp or Dimax them however you'd like. Isn't it expensive? 
well guy who asks convenient questions. At Dynamic Discs, you can see what's available and fill out the form to see what it'll cost you before you even order. Sometimes I fill it out just for fun, because you can watch the numbers go. Anyways, head to dynamicdiscs.com custom to place your custom order and grow your brand, whatever that is. This is a new era of disc golf. Holland Hanley putting for birdie. And in exciting fashion, Hanley from way downtown. Heading over to Cap Merch. Third oh, shot, Cap Merch from way downtown. Oh, Valerie Manduhano, your 2022 Portland Open champion. Commanding fashion. You can't stop on Scott because you can only look the container. <gasps> what a clutch putt. Maria Oliva from downtown. Wow. This Haley for Eagle. U.S. Championship on the line. Haley King with a two-shot lead. Val, you've been in this position many times going into the final round of a major championship. What's going through the players' minds right now? They are focused. I have no doubt that they're nervous. But they just need to dial it in. This is their last chance. Start for King. Pretty much identical shot from Evelina. Loves it. Miss 
and the best drive of the group from Oliva. Let's send it down to Terry Miller, who's known Haley King for quite some time, and a little bit more about her upbringing as a disc golfer. Terry? Yeah, Charlie, I met Haley back when she was just 14 years old. The year was 2016, and it was a wintry C tier that I was running, and her and her dad showed up for it. She went on to destroy the division, and they ultimately played in six different divisions that year, including Open, where she declined cash. The very next year, she went up against Val Jenkins in another tournament I ran. She got Val by a single stroke in the first round, but Val came back to get her by two. So she's had a long history of playing well here in Wisconsin. Let's see what she can do today. Well, thank you, Terry. And she talked about playing Elver. She knows the course, obviously, from her home state right now. And the math is on her side as well. The very few times that we've seen at majors anybody come back from a two-stroke deficit or larger it just happened one time 2015 u.s women's big cheer from elsewhere on the course this whole lead card looking at birdies and you can already feel the pressure of the putting that we're going to see today that's what I love about this course. I love that bullseyes are tough to find. I mean, Maria is sitting right there with a fantastic drive, but there's a lot of circles edge putts that these players are going to have to knock down. think as we head into the final holes on the course how important a stroke could be and it could be the stroke that they miss on the very first hole so it's very important to get off start shooting hot from the start Haley has been so smooth on the putting green she's in for her birdie and funny you mentioned the two-stroke deficit. That's what Haley came into last year's U.S. Women's, trailing two strokes behind Paige and wasn't able to catch up. Ultimately finished in second place. That's her best finish at a major. Still chasing that first win as Owen Scoggins knocks down the birdie putt. This is quite the comebacker for Evelina. And although she missed some putts yesterday, she was consistently hitting the comeback putt, not today. Oliva in for the birdie. Evelina gonna drop a stroke, make it two to Haley. as she falls back to 23 under. Haley's lead now three over Owen Scoggins. To hole three, Henna Blomroos. There is no player in the FPO division I love watching more than a healthy Henna Blomroos. She throws with so much commitment. And putting with commitment, Valerie Mondujano, we've watched her hit so many solid Elver. long putts, whether it's a jumper from uh, circle two or a beautiful circle's edge putt. So there's a look at the leaderboard. Chase card trying to make some moves. But with the way that Haley has been putting this week, it's going to be tough to catch her. Certainly a beautiful day for some disc golf, but steamy temperatures out there, 85 degrees in Madison, state capital of Wisconsin. And born and raised in Wisconsin, Haley King knows what these Midwest summers are all about. I mean, and it's not much different from where she lives now in North Carolina. 
You know, it's pretty incredible going out on tour for the first time and playing the West Coast stretch as a Midwesterner. It is such a shock to see 95 in the forecast, but then be totally fine outside. You're used to walking out and completely sweating right away. So yeah, the, these conditions are huge advantage to be to be born in them. But it makes having a chalk bag or a whale sack so crucial to make sure you have the right grip on the disc. And I love the way Haley attacks this shot with the sidearm. She has so much space on the left-hand side of the fairway. And as the disc fades back into the hill, it just sticks. The backhand can be very challenging on this elevation. Owen played this hole perfectly yesterday. All a bit shorter than King's Drive, however. Par and a solid Anheuser drive there for Maria. She's going to be a little shorter than she was yesterday. Maybe a little turnover to the green. Evelina, a little down the hill, but that is a fine position to be in left. Let's find out some Elmer more Park about on the this southwest beautiful side of Madison disc golf course. Is a course that is just describes traditional disc golf. A course installed in the early 90s. You essentially zigzag your way up the side of a sledding hill. You play on top for a little while. You have varying mix of elevation. And then hole 18 is the payoff. You're throwing down 18 nearly 500 feet, but reachable. It's Wisconsin's version of top of the world. No surprise that all of Madison's courses feature variety, and that's exactly what you find at Elver Park. The first few are open along with the finishing holes, but when you're up top, you know that there's some wooded holes, there's some corridors, there's lanes you have to hit. If you hit a tree and you kick off the fairway, it's gonna cost you a stroke just to get back in position. Three of the things that I love most about Elver Park would be balance, history, and challenge. It's got it all. There was certainly plenty of challenge on display yesterday and lots of scoring as well as we head over to hole four, Valerie Mondahano putting for birdie. Cashes it in, that's two in a row for Val. She's within five, back to two. Towering forehand for Evelina. That needs to stay on the ground and not roll, and it does. It's going to be a nice birdie look, maybe 10, 15 feet. <coughs> Evelina trying to bounce back after the bogey on hole one. And now we really haven't talked much about Owen. She is going to quietly play this round and sneakily shoot well. She has an incredible chance to win. She is the most veteran player on our card. She's been playing disc golf, according to PDGA, in tournaments, in competitive tournaments since 2011. I mean, she's made final nines in world championships time after time, and she's a reigning Masters world champion. She knows what it takes to win. And she has the key tool out here, the best putter on tour. Hit 44% of her circle two putts yesterday. Could very well come into play down the stretch here in the final round. And when Terry was talking about the early history of Haley King, Haley was playing juniors and advanced divisions. That was just 2016, so not that long ago. She turned pro in 2018, but she, right from the start, she is just a talent. She is so athletic. She's so skillful. 
And that is why we've seen and talked about Haley King since she started on the scene. Misfire from King. She's in the bushes. Let's go to five. This looks to have the turn as long as it gets over the bush. It's another beautiful shot. She's got the shallow circle two jumper working. She's got the drives working. That was a really strange reaction off the ground, but Maria is going to have a, a putt. Trying to save par at this point. Haley looks to be in a little bit better of a position than it might have seemed. Able to step out of the bushes. So she'll have a comfortable tap in for par. We saw it yesterday. We saw people pull ahead and then all of a sudden fall behind. Momentum shifts back and forth. At first in the round, it was a very laid back vibe. The card mates were really getting along and joking around with each other. And then all of a sudden, the back nine hits. It starts to tighten up for everyone. The pressure starts to mount. Maria's putt chains out. She's looking at bogey. Own for birdie. Dead center chains. Another birdie for Scoggins, and she's going to get one stroke closer to Haley King. Good bounce back for Evelina. So she erases the bogey from hole one. She'll be three shots back of King, who has this for par. Yeah, we watched Evelina miss a putt on hole one from a very short distance yesterday and snap back to focus very quickly. So we'll see what happens throughout this round. To hole five, Mondahano putting for birdie. Make it a turkey. Valerie's got three straight. She's keeping the chase coming from the chase card. We'll be right back with more action from the USWDGC. Hi, I'm Innova Team Captain Nate Sexton. Welcome to our instructional disc golf series. black hole portal. There are four rows of chains and four rings to hold them in place. They've updated it with galvanized steel chains. It catches everything. It's like the perfect basket. Welcome back to live coverage on the Disc Golf Network. Here's Owen Scoggins on hole three. Another decent shot. She might have a low ceiling underneath those pines. But being a spin putter is a big advantage from that position. Fabulous shot from Evelina. 
such a smooth turn turning uh, Anheuser with the flatten towards the end of the flight. She's so good at those shots. But choosing that correct height as you release a sidearm to ride the side hill, really dial that one up. Yeah, that might be in the thick stuff. We'll see if she has a route to the basket from there. Valerie Mondahano on six, coming off three straight birdies. And that's going to be right there. She's putting for another birdie from circle one. And this is the time to make something happen. Valerie's already moved herself into that fourth place position. Her drives are looking very accurate, and she's putting even when she's 20, 25 feet away. Adding those two skill sets together, a, a lot of these holes are so reachable, and she is scoring because of that. And she's the one player who's won an Elite Series event this season that's trying to chase down this lead card. Obviously, Evelina, a lot of experience winning at the high levels. Owen wins the match play championships. Haley's got winning experience, but Valerie's done it this year. Yeah, Valerie winning at Waco early in the season and then winning the Portland Open. She definitely has momentum on her side. I do not envy this lie for Maria. That is n nearly an impossible lie. She could have potentially straddled and, and fallen forward on something, but that is just a tight, low ceiling window to hit. And we saw the openings out to the short grass, but that wasn't in the direction of the basket. Yeah, there's really not room to want to pitch up to 35, 40 feet, or else you know you're falling behind rather than trying to give yourself a look, trusting your skills. Trusting her skills is how she got here this week. It's going to be a bogey. Yeah, and how quickly that just happened. You know, taking maybe an extra moment to think out the shot and think about the gaming strategy. You know, if she were to just pitch out, kind of sacrifice that shot, but just give yourself an open look, maybe that was a better shot. And if this was one of those brutal courses that we sometimes see on tour, Making the pitch out is much more appealing because that's a smart move, but when it's a sprint of a course like Elver is, 4,000 feet shorter than some of the other courses they have to see, it is not appealing to make that decision. It's going to be back-to-back -back bogeys for Oliva. And it's going to be back-to-back -back birdies for Owen Scoggins. Yeah, that's her third in a row. She's been playing pretty perfect this round. She's throwing the disc really well, already better than we saw yesterday. A lot of her drives yesterday were coming out not as crisp as you know she wanted. These three drives she's thrown have been great. Another miss just off the cage from Salonen. It's her third circle one miss today. Tap in birdie for Haley King. She maintains a two-shot lead over Owen Scoggins. Tough start for Maria Oliva. She's now in sixth place. Seven shots back. To six, Katrina Allen, two under on the day. And a perfect kick. That will set her up for a third birdie. As we catch up with Sayananda, who is putting for birdie on six. Oh, 
doesn't get the birdie, but with that and the tap-in par, she has now set the longest streak this season of consecutive bogey-free holes, passing Emerson Keith. What a performance from Sayananda, currently in seventh place at 20 under. And I can't help but to think all of these records being broken. I mean, Cy breaking the record for FPO and MPO, the attendance records for this event. It's the largest women's tournament that we've ever seen. Around 90 FPO competitors. I mean, it's just outstanding. Haley clipped a little cabbage going for that over-the-top flex shot. I don't think she's going to have a look for birdie from circle two. And Evelina just going straight up the gut. Buzz in the basket. Big smile from Evelina. Oh, that would have been something. She needed a little energy. She needed a little something to get her round going, and that was it. Stahlheiser again fades out a bit left for Maria, but she gets the distance this time. One more time, let's take a look at the Zuka replay of Evelina's tee shot. The crowd was calling for it, and I'm sure from their perspective, I mean, that was coming basket high, but just in front of the cage. We've got quite the gallery out there today. Terry, what's it like down there on the ground? About how many people you see following this lead card out at Elver? Yeah, the gallery, as you guys said, were calling for that ace. Just a few inches away, you see the knees bending. You hear the O's and the A's. Everybody's very excited. We've got a few hundred people out here hiking up the hill. It's a beautiful day in Madison, and they're taking it all in. Couldn't ask for a better way to spend the Sunday before the 4th of July. So Haley in scramble mode. Okay. I believe she actually left that one short. She's outside the circle, Brian. 35 footer for a par. Door open. And I think Haley's disc got stuck in that tree. No two, no two meter rule. What other sport are, is doing this right now? <laughs> Remember, folks, this is disc golf. This is such a relatable moment. I love this. Surprised no one has the baseball in their side pouch in their bag. That's a pro move. <laughs> Got to have that. Well done. If that was a spectator or a PDGA marshal or whoever it was. To the green. Not this time, although she's hit a few from that distance this week. But yesterday's back nine struggles continuing here early for Maria. Big par save. Nice. That was an inch or two too far left. Well, Haley has not faced a lot of adversity this week. She's been playing excellent disc golf. How will she respond? Oh, nearly making it four in a row. 
And Owen is holding herself with a, a different demeanor today. The first three rounds, oh, of course, showing a little character there. But these first couple of holes, Owen has just looked so incredibly focused. She hits the putt. It's no big, there's no pose. There's no big smile. She's locked in. Evelina, on the other hand, we have yet to see her make a decent ranged putt. She's got another one from a distance that she's historically struggled with this year. We thought we'd seen the end of it. And it is so difficult to not let those negative thoughts creep into your mind. Now that it's happened a couple times in this round, Evelina, we've seen her bounce back. We've seen her continually to go for those putts, make a few confidence building putts, and she's right back to the normal Evelina that we know. But this is it. This is the final round of a major. This is when the shots are really going to count. Let's go to seven. Valerie Mondahano has four straight birdies going for a fifth. You can go ahead and count it. Valerie going to get five in a row. Katrina trying to stay in the hunt as well. Just birdied six. She's three under on the day. It's another perfect line, that low driver skip shot. Both of them go on to take the birdies. Valerie just two shots back of Haley. Katrina three shots back. Things are heating up here in the final round of the USWDGC. So, Own Scoggins takes the box. Picks up a stroke on Haley, who bogeys. And just burns it into the ground. I will say, Haley has the advantage on this course because of the fact that there are a few holes that Own is going to have a really tough time getting into circle one on. This hole specifically, the 666-foot par four hole number eight, as well as number 18 are all holes that are slightly out of her grasp. So she's going to have to play three strokes better than what Haley does on top of having to catch her. Maria inside the circle. These are the holes she needs to take advantage of, and that was a fantastic shot down the right side. Circle two putt coming up for Evelina. Let's go to the eighth. Valerie Mondahano, five under with five straight birdies. This chase card is really just setting the pace to what the leaders need to shoot. Seeing Valerie and Katrina moving into these positioning course they're a couple holes ahead of our lead card but they are certainly making a run both Katrina and Valerie catching a little bit of cabbage on the left edge 
lot of work to do to try to get a birdie on a very difficult hole eight. You can see it right here in our frame. There's a lot of distractions. There's a lot happening with the crowds that are following our lead card. It's a different type of focus it takes for players to kind of push those pressures aside. Our chase card, they're not dealing with much of that right now. Owen puts it inside of 15 feet and is always remaining positive. Let's send it down to Terry Miller, who can tell us a little bit more about Own Scoggins and her positive attitude. Just before the round, you guys, Own was saying to the rest of their group that she didn't care if it wasn't her that won, but she wanted the winner to make sure that it came from the lead card. So she's always the hype woman, always cheering on her competitors, and she wants the winner to come from this card. Well, the pressure is on this lead card right now from the chase. And, I mean, those are good odds. Uh, owns 25% of this group. So, yeah, <laughs> she's cheering for herself, too. Don't let her get you. <laughs> she's a cheerleader for everybody, but she hypes herself up, too. Subtly putting pressure on everyone else. <laughs> right. I mean, there's also the psychological element of wanting your card mates to play well so you get pushed as well and potentially tighten up your focus. It's tough when the rest of your card is playing stagnant and you look at U-Disc and the chase card is hunting you down. But Haley getting the tap in birdie and that will extend her lead back to two. And just the margins out here at Elver are smaller than it may seem. A small mistake off the tee can cost you a stroke. Scoggins in for the par. Evelina knocking it down. And Oliva also in for the par. So, through five holes, our lead card continuing the action. Haley King, two shot lead. We'll see how it plays out when we come back. camaraderie and coming together with the ladies so you know you don't really get that a lot of places really want to embrace that it's really special we know for a fact that women's events are one of the biggest ways to grow women in the sport and to get retention we know that women's events are everyone's favorite thing to remember everyone's number one reason for coming back and playing tournament u.s women's is obviously going to be a big thing for retention of women Valerie Mondahano, five birdies in a row. Her second on hole eight. What a recovery shot after a short tee shot, and she'll have a putt for birdie from circle two. And Haley has pulled her drive over to the right. Opening the door yet again for Owen. This is a solid looking forehand if it can get through these trees. So back and forth, Haley and Owen. Owen taking a stroke on hole four, Haley taking it back on hole five. Scoggins now a chance to get it right back. And that is exactly what she needed right now. That was fantastic for Maria. It's nice to finally pin one under the basket. Yeah. Oh. 
nearly perfect from Evelina. I think she hit that same tree yesterday on this hole. Maria Oliva's drive one more time. She just yanked over on that disc and it drifted perfectly. She has so much control over the backhand shots and that has been just on display for Maria, even in the woods, hitting lines that we typically would see just an easy throwing sidearm to get those angles. Maria has really just impressed me this weekend. This is her first year on tour. She's learning a lot as she goes along, and this has to be the biggest stage that she's ever been on. She was our leader after round one, our leader after round two, and she's still right there on our small leaderboard. And we could see a podium finish if she maintains, but I mean, we've seen how these holes can happen. This course is playing so quickly. Six in a row for Valerie Mondahano. She's charging from the chase card. She's only three shots back. Make it two shots back now of Haley King. And Haley out of position. She'll have a putt, but from well outside the circle for par. the door open for players to get strokes on her she's just she's not playing flawless so it's going to be a matter of can she just maintain can she keep it going and stop the bleeding on these strokes big putt from Evelina we saw yesterday her first big putt that she hit kind of sparked the light bulb moment for her and she hit a bunch of fantastic putts yesterday Let's see that again. It's all about body positioning and, and posture for her. That looked so balanced. You could see a sigh of relief. And even though she's missed putts in this round, she is still feeling like she can go for those. And there's Haley's par putt. She is going to bogey. And now a chance for a two-shot swing. If Owen can knock this down, we could have a tie at the top. Man, I was thinking, as soon as we saw Haley shank over to the right, Owen quickly stepped up, and how clutch of a drive that was to park the pin. Not a ton of pressure with how strong she is as a putter. Easy birdie, and now we've got a tie. Something I noticed at the match play championships when she won, the final day, she leaned on her sidearm even more than she normally does. I'm not sure if maybe she was conserving energy, but now she's going full force. Her sidearm looks amazing today. Here's Katrina for par on hole eight. So she maintains a four under round. She's just three shots back of the leaders. And look at the leaderboard and the shifts that we've seen. Valerie Mondahano, with the longest streak of birdies at Elver this weekend, is now just one shot back. An outstanding scorecard for Valerie today. And we know she's no stranger to winning majors. She won back in 2014 in the junior uh, under 16, I believe. She won again junior under 19. I mean, she knows how to win. She has three world titles under her belt. And with this year of winning those events on the Elite Series, she overcame her fears. She said, I'm pushing doubt away. I am giving it everything I've got. And she's making it happen in this final round. 
need just a matter of time. Yeah. Just in case if you guys want it. Own focused. 231 foot par three. Count it again. That driver skip shot is the preferred shot on this hole, and that's Own's preferred shot in general with the backhand. Maria hit the first available tree yesterday. And overcorrected today. Looks like she went with a little bit slower disc and didn't get that left push quick enough. Higher line there from Evelina. She's inside the circle. Looks like Haley was also going slower disc, and it just doesn't look like that's the shape. All the park jobs we've seen so far have been with that driver. Let's take a look at hole seven. I keep talking about this skip shot, but the hole is shaped so perfectly for it. This doesn't have to be a touchy hyzer. This is a stock shot. You can throw a low driver that hits the elbow. The ground is covered in this pine straw, and you can get a beautiful penetrating skip off to the green here. It doesn't need to be fancy. This is only 231 feet, and it's created some great scoring separation so far. Oliva with a jump approach. She'll have a tap in par. Unless Haley can pull off some magic here, Own Scoggins is about to be your outright leader. We know in the past that it is the mental game that has held Haley King back from success. It's the doubt that does creep into Haley King's mind. But if she can overcome that and rely on the skills that she knows she has, she's in contention. She just can't get too far behind the eight ball. Everyone on the lead card still in the mix. Evelina to move within two of the leaders for now. It's not the same conviction we saw on the previous hole. Yeah, flip a coin. I mean, today, it just, it, from one putt to the next, her confidence, the way she stands over it, the release, everything seems to change from each putt. You wonder if the putt she missed from 10 feet on hole 18 yesterday stuck with her. You never want to finish a round three putting, and you have to go home with that. So we'll see. Haley in for the par. She remains at 27 under. And we still haven't even seen Own go for her birdie putt. <laughs> Automatic. Own Scoggins now the outright leader at the U.S. Women's Championships. Trying to chase her down, though is Valerie Mondejano, who has six straight. Short par four, hole number nine. Hit that tree. <laughs> Look how much that's tracking right before it fades. It looks like she might just be on the edge. We'll see if she can convert another birdie when we come back. I never thought it would happen, and here we are.
Thank you, DGA, for allowing 5,000 kids in our community to be able to learn disc golf that may otherwise not have had access to it. If your course needs new baskets, fill out the survey, come up with a plan, and you could be sitting here a year from now with new baskets at your course. Welcome back. Oates Goggins on the tee of hole eight. And she's getting applause, but I'm not quite sure from the camera angle if she landed in that section of bushes or she pushed past it. Looks like it's just squirted out on the left hand side. This is one of those holes, like I said earlier, that Maria, Haley, and Evelina have a huge advantage on own just outside of her range. And this is more of the distance that we typically see on par fours, 666 feet requires a couple of shots over 300 feet to be within that putting green. And for throwers like Haley and Maria, I mean, they're throwing 400 plus with casual effortless shots. So this hole is definitely the hardest hole in the course. You have to push the drive uphill and to the left, but you have these little bushes and trees that you can't push behind. And then when you do that, you have to go back downhill and throw a bit of a turnover. We watched Maria Oliva do it with perfection yesterday, but you have to get the disc to slow down and pan right at the basket here. This is a tough par four. Well, let's send it down to Terry Miller. Terry. Sounds like we have some FPO royalty in attendance. In the bush? Oh, yeah, you're right here. Oh, good. Oh, it's crazy for you. <laughs> when I release it, I'm like, oh, that's, that's going to be in the bush. Go in there. <laughs> Thank you so much. And it looks like uh, no, thank you. we've lost Terry for the moment, so we'll check back in with him when we can. The first ever FPO world champion is in attendance spectating today and i would love to hear some stories i mean can you even imagine what it was like to play in the first world championship i mean what was the division like how many women were playing and to come out so many years later and see what type of event has pulled together women from around the world marie jackson elsner from Wisconsin, won the 1983 and 1984 World Championships. I wasn't born yet. Times have changed. <laughs> you. So Owen out of position for birdie as we take a look at Katrina's second shot on hole nine. So that's a chance for birdie for Cat. He's four under on the day and four shots back of Owen Scoggins. Distance control is crucial. If you go too far, you can end up in the woods. Oh, no. And I saw the disc come down. I'm not sure how deep she's in there, but I can't imagine she's on the edge. And those woods and bushes back there are brutal. 
The underbrush is not groomed back there, so you don't have clean routes. And on the other hand, you don't want to leave it short. There's still a lot of distance that they need to cover on the second shot. And it's so challenging because there's nothing to tell you that distance. The pin's just sitting out there. Evelina will be putting for birdie from edge of the circle. Big shot for Haley. Left it low, but also got a bit of a drop from the wind. Haley's in trouble. Already two bogeys today. Here's Valerie Mondahano throwing her second on hole nine. And so even though she ended up in the rough, Brian, she was so far up the fairway that it was an easy pitch out. And that's why a lot of these players are still throwing driver off the tee on this very short par four. And that is a very short putt for her seventh birdie in a row. You guys, this would be incredible. I mean, Valerie is in such great position right now. Her and Katrina... They're vibing on their car, they're shooting well, they're creating their own energy. Whereas, take a look at the shots we just saw out of our lead card. Everybody is struggling on the par four. So Owen is gonna be on the back side of this bush. She actually has a stretch out forehand from there, but Haley looks like she has to go inside of the bush. Own Scoggins trying to become the third player to win an FPO major after winning an age protected pro major. Beth Tanner did it back in 1996 when she won Worlds. And Tito Galde won the 2002 Japan Open after winning five majors in the age protected divisions. This is going to be tough. She loves the chop style forehand with uh, overstable drivers, but does she have the touch forehand to just pop an Anheuser at a slower speed and let something ride out? She really loves to throw her whole body into her forehands, and let's see what she can do from a restricted angle. You lady want to come and look at my feet? You want to come and look at my feet? Just quickly, just in case it's approved you. <laughs> look at my feet right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just in case. I don't want you guys to be like, oh. You know. Trying to take all the drama out of question on calling Haley over just to check her stance to make sure it's legal. And for those of you new players that are just watching now, she has to be as unobstructing as possible when it comes to interacting with the bush. You cannot push it down into the ground. Oh my goodness. How did she dial that up and near throw it in? Oh, and Scoggins, everybody. She's feeling it today. I spin up the Zuka replay. I think my heart just started working again. I think we're back. Wow. And that was with the driver again. Such touch. She knows the angles of her equipment so well. The way that Owen released that, I mean, it was, if it were to land on the ground, that looked like it was going to be a roller, but with such stability. That was beautiful. And Haley buzzes the basket as well. She'll have a 25, 30 footer for par. Try to main, remain within one stroke of Own Scoggins. So it does look like Maria's disc ended up close enough to the edge that she's gonna be able to have a look at the basket.
Good recoveries from all three. Maria's got to get something going, though. She's sh six shots back. Big opportunity to take a stroke on the card for Salonen. She needs to hit putts like that if she's going to be in contention. And it is not looking consistent today. It, not a, consistent enough to win a major title. That is her sixth miss inside the circle today. Off the front tray again is Haley. That's another bogey. And to think she had the opportunity to jump putt from that bush and ends up really in a tricky spot for the putt where his own blind puts it underneath the basket. So Scoggins' lead going to extend to two for the moment, but Valerie Mondahano is trying to close the gap even further. Let's jump ahead to hole nine. This for birdie. Make it seven in a row. What a round from Valerie. And she's not quite at the top of the 10-10 discs hot rounds of the day leaderboard. Ella Hansen, eight under through 17. She's moved up quite a few spots, but Valerie right there and finishes the front nine seven down. The best we saw out of yesterday's round was Haley King with the nine under. Valerie is on pace for a comeback. And you mentioned, Charlie, we've only seen it once ever in the FPO division, and that was at this event in 2015. And shout out to Hannah Leatherman. I hear that her and her husband, Dustin, are expecting their first child. So U.S. champion, I'm sure she's tuning in today, see who is going to join her in that list of historic finishes. A little trouble on the left side for Scoggins. You know, the bright side is she is on the left side, and if she's on the edge again, she's shown that she has skills from the straddle stance, and the hole is only 453 feet. She's still advanced the fairway a little bit. And we go from one of the hardest holes on the course, the par 4, hole 8, to the par 4 here on hole 9, almost one of the easiest holes on the course just need to put the disc in play and have it land in the grass and you will have a look at birdie or you could do this that's a smash for evelina she's going to have an eagle look that just blew the mind of some super fan halfway down the fairway you got to think, there's a lot of locals watching these players hit shots they can only dream of. Yeah, if you're throwing forehand, you have no room to throw the flex. You have to get it moving right, right away. That's another strong sidearm for Haley King. She should be in good position to get a birdie, but an even better shot from Evelina. Oh, I love the way she throws the hyzer flip. It's such a smooth sidearm. And that is the patented sidearm from Evelina, brought to you by Sunstein LLP, your source for copyright and patent law in disc golf. To hold 10. Ooh, Valerie trying to throw that in. Just misses left. 
she'll be inside the circle for par. So still a little work left to do for Valerie. Here's her par putt. Finishes seven straight birdies with a bogey. Leaves you questioning the choice to run the throw, and it looked like she was trying to put that in. I understand the confidence, but the green on 10 seems to take discs deep and slide them outside of the circle. Kind of a heat check. So back to nine. Scoggins throwing her second. Straddle and obstruction behind her. She can put more commitment into this sidearm, though, if she can get the disc high up in her stance. She doesn't like to throw the forehand from low. I'm not even sure if she has discs she throws Heiser flips with for sidearm. And that branch in her backswing, that is definitely something she's got to put out of her mind or just choose another stance. Oh, and that certainly took a lot of heat off of the disc. So she tried to commit and throw through it, and it didn't work out. Yeah, yours is further down there. So now scrambling for par on this par four that's 200 feet shorter than hole eight. I'm expecting to see this very tight race all the way down to the end. And just to see Owen make a mistake like that, like get yourself into another stance oh, where you can you have a full <laughs> arm swing without anything in the way. Yeah, it just looked really tough. The underbrush on that side just was really overgrown. And it's so frustrating to be in a stance like that. But she was lucky enough to even just be on the edge. She didn't like that one either. Well, what a battle we've got going on. Valerie Mondahano, after taking the bogey on 10. She is moving the disc left to right so beautifully today. She has those fairway drivers completely dialed in. Parked for birdie on 11. Back to nine. Birdie putt coming up for Maria. Evelina going to try to put this in. And that looked to go a little deep, Charlie. Kind of ended up the worst of both worlds. Yeah. Haley with the layup for a short birdie putt coming up. Oh, and look how short Owen's layup went. And this is for par. Thank you. Wow. So Owen is going to be putting for bogey. And we are set to see another two-shot swing if Haley can cash in the birdie putt. What a chess match. I love these type of scenarios where each shot matters, every hole and every scenario is coming into play. 
it also makes you start to look at your opponents a little bit more. You, you see, you know, this is beginning to be the person I have to start focusing on. They make a mistake here. I can play safer if I need to and still take a stroke on them. There's a lot of these little match play elements that come into these types of situations. Evelina cashes it in. So she moves back to 25 under. Haley gets the birdie. It's going to be tied back up at the top at 27 under. Valerie Mondahano one shot back. And own in for bogey. Evelina now just two shots back of the leaders. Here's Katrina for par on hole 11. Wow, a big mistake for Allen. She's just going to drop to 24 under. She's three shots back. Here's Sai Ananda, still bogey-free, going for birdie to make it three in a row. Yes. So she moves to 24 under. She's in a tie for fifth with Katrina, three shots back. And Valerie Mondahano coming off of the bogey on 10, absolutely parking it here on 11. It's tied at the top. Valerie has caught all the way up to both Haley and Own at 27 under. We have got a battle. With so many people. I mean, there are so many people in contention to take this down. I mean, seeing how well Sai is shooting right now. Sai has three major titles under her belt. A world a women's title in intermediate women from back in 2013 and two world champion titles in the junior and the advanced women. So she knows what she needs to do to overcome the pressure. Maria trying to go right side. You wonder as a force over player why the left side was not as appealing, but seems to be the gap that she took yesterday as well. And that kick saved her from going wrong. Full 10 is brought to you by Eric, the official cancer prevention charity of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Their charity's mission is simple. Early recognition is critical. Speak up when something doesn't feel right with your body and catch cancer early. Woo! Money from Haley. own talking about the wind coming into play it looks like a very protected fairway but she changes the disc and she ripped that off to the right side did not finish mm -hmm. and Haley has the advantage about to take a stroke let's go to 12 Valerie Doesn't get through that first line of trees. Maybe we'll have a window for a chance of a circle two putt. Here's Henna. Haven't seen much of Henna today. She's one under on the round. She's currently in a tie for ninth. Seven shots back. Just another misfire from Henna. Hasn't been as crisp as she was yesterday off the tee. Just Henna unable to take advantage early. 
missing five circle one putts, all for birdie. And as we see Owen lining up a sidearm, she doesn't have a putt. Uh, that disc changed last minute before stepping on the box. I, I don't think she should have done it. Let's see if this can get close. Thank goodness that was nobody's head. That was coming in hard on that hard pack. She is right underneath the pin. Another excellent recovery from Scoggins. And a fan favorite right now out in Madison. She has now had three dramatic sidearm saves from Ruff. Maria saves the par. And we are just getting ready to enter this stretch in the woods. And we saw some big numbers yesterday. If you get off the fairway on a couple of these holes, it can be very difficult to even save par, let alone bogey. Not that time for Evelina. Another one just off the cage. Now her seventh miss from circle one this week, or excuse me, in this round. She had six total C1X misses combined in the first three rounds. It's wild to even think she's two strokes behind the leader. She's still right in it right now. She just has to snap to focus as we jump into the woods here. Haley in for the birdie, and that will Give her, again, the outright lead at 28 under. Valerie Mondahano out of position on hole 12. Here's her second shot. Solid effort. She will have to settle for par. And here's Hannah Blomroos putting for par. There it is. From about 40 feet, Hannah Blomru saves the par. So Haley King back in front, but what a roller coaster of a round it's been with seven holes to play for our lead card. And this was about the time in the round yesterday where we saw Haley really dial it in. We get into some technical shots. Haley King had our best final nine holes yesterday, oh, yeah. shooting five down. It's going to be about a 40 footer short of the basket on hole number 11, 309 feet. A turnover is a pretty appropriate shot. Forehand needs a lot of power. She hit a birdie putt here yesterday from about 50. It's Maria trying to make a correction on her shot yesterday. Overturned it. There is just so much power behind Evelina's drive. Back up, guys. Back up, back up. She also couldn't get it to finish right. Another very overstable disc. I'm not quite sure what she was throwing there, but that snapped out quick. Oh, improving. She's no one-trick pony. She's got the backhand, too, and she takes CTP for the group. To 12, Sayananda on the tee. That's a fantastic shot for Ananda. 10 feet from the pin, here's Valerie. 
That's trouble. Getting off the tee clean in these very thickly wooded holes is crucial. We see a score separation happen. Hitting the first available could risk bogey, but getting through clean, you can have a putt at birdie. So there's still a lot that can happen, but Valerie has looked so spot on with her drives today. Let's see if she can get it back on track from the tee. So everyone on the lead card putting for birdie from circle two. Thing, Advantage own Scoggins. She has hit 48% of her circle two putts this weekend. She struggled to find the pop on that jump putt. Her standing putt has been fantastic this week with lots yeah. of range, but it's just that last second she seems a little late to release on the jump putt. Evelina giving it a run. Now going to have some work to do for the par. <laughs> Maria, dead center. I was about to say, it's putts at this length are what we saw time and time again in the first two rounds. And it was that lady right there who was the shining star from a long distance. And you know, Owen loves a good challenge. Let's see if she can can this one. Maybe thinking about the wind. Goes off the top of the basket. She might still be out. That was a rocket off the top of the basket. Kind of a worst case scenario if you're hitting metal. Sometimes can send you farther than if you airballed. She is inside the circle, but gonna be a difficult putt to convert. <laughs> Fantastic save. Puts her to another tester distance. And this week I wouldn't normally call it that. But the focus has seemed to leave. And it's going to be her third three putt after taking the bogeys on one and four, she takes the double bogey here on 11. That drops her five shots back of King. It is gonna be very difficult for Evelina to catch back up at this point. So after going off the fairway, <laughs> Valerie Mondahano plinkos her way inside the circle. Sayananda now putting for par from distance to try to remain bogey free. And it's not gonna go down, so what a performance from Sayananda to go bogey free for more than three and a half rounds.
And what a save there from Valerie Mondahano to remain within one of Haley King. As the battle starting to look like it's crystallizing to this top three. Doesn't get the turn on the drive there. But it looked like she got a pretty decent kick off that left side. Puts her inside the circle too. And this hole is just 300 feet with a slight incline to the basket on kind of a dirt putting green. So you can, you can throw it low and get the skip. Kind of take the trees out of the equation. Haley hits low but doesn't get inside and have some trees in the way of her putt. Let's see if Owen could get it closer. I'm thinking back to Owen as she took down that match play event and how clutch her side arms were, how amazing her putts were. She's a player you just can't count out. <laughs> Haley needs to be on top of it to keep Owen away. <laughs> Make go, baby. Make go, baby. <laughs> Dialing it up, the Mako. Valerie Mondahano on 14. <laughs> Evelina. Salonen <laughs> just after a great three rounds of putting just has not had it today. Ten missed putts from inside the circle. And you think about even if half of those go in, she's up at the top. I will say, I still call the previous three rounds progress for her. She's going to have to start from scratch, and something like this does not happen, happen often. We've seen it in other sports, and she's just going to have to fight through it. Maria's roll away, luckily kicks a tree, sits in its tracks there. Haley from about 28, 29 feet. She's got a clear look at the pen. Oh, that looked great out of the hand. It just falls out the right side. Can Owen make her pay and tie it up at the top? <laughs> Maria in for par. She'll be four shots back. Short birdie putt for Evelina. Yeah. That's great work. So now Own, she just does not miss from this distance. And she is a player you can confidently say that. She is just so incredible with the putter and even stronger when it counts and the pressure is on. Haley dropping in for par. And that means that Own Scoggins has tied it back up and is the co-leader with Haley King at 28 under after this birdie putt. Can Own Scoggins become the third player to win an open major after winning an age-protected major? We'll find out next.
We're back on the tee of 13. Maybe the most treacherous hole on the course. And that's a mistake from Owen Scoggins. kick for Evelina. Looks like a pretty good bounce for Maria after her round went south here yesterday and she took the double bogey five. And this is Huge tee shot coming up here for Haley King. Huge shot on a very short hole, but the technicality is high. Forehand finds one of the first trees, but she's still in the fairway. That was Valerie Mondahano. Good recovery from Haley. Let's send it down to Terry Miller. Terry, can you tell us about the lie here for Owen? Yeah, Owen kicked over to the right hand side and as a guy who's played this hole for more than 20 years, it is a heartbreaker time and time again. Seeing the double bogey like we saw from Maria yesterday, not surprising because when you get off the fairway here, you're in a world of hurt. It's tough to get up and down. Well, it looks like Owen is at least going to have a putt, probably from just inside the circle for a par. And this hole being 234 feet, we've just seen 15% of our field get birdie. 28% of the field, bogey or worse. Pat Murch for an eagle on her 15. Her scorecard matching that incredible outfit, but she gets dark blue and her hands go in the air. Beautiful putt. Yeah, I'm not sure you're rooting for the American flag scorecard but it's appropriate on July 3rd. Oh, it's good effort from Maria. That would have been a big birdie to get her back within three, but she'll have to settle for a par. Back to 14, Mondahano putting for par. And another circle one miss. She's had three in the last five holes. Hey, we were just talking about how we can, we could almost bet our house that Owen is going to make putts like that. And that's an air ball. Very surprising. King does convert the par. So she is going to go back in front and be your solo leader at 28 under. Own in for bogey, and I feel like we're seeing the pressure start to get to Own. We've seen her switch discs a couple times, worrying more about the wins, not playing with quite the same pace as we've seen earlier in the tournament. She knows what these putts mean, and although she's smiling and laughing on the outside, she is nervous on the inside. This is a big deal. To 15. Valerie coming off the bogey. That's a beautiful shot right in the middle of the fairway. Evelina, 
Evelina Maria Haley Owen. How you doing this one? How you doing this one? Okay. Oh. Evelina first on the tee. And a beautiful subtle hyzer there for Evelina. Slowed it down. Just didn't quite figure out the shape on this hole. It's a tricky hole for being as short as it is. Birdie putt coming up for Haley. Too far left for Owen Scoggins. Haley King has the one shot lead. Just a few holes to go down the stretch here at the USW DGC. Brastein four five four six three asks, "What's a disc you have in your bag that nobody else really uses?" Um, I feel like a lot of people do use this disc, but I throw an Excal. I like the way it flies. I like the way it glides, and I definitely love the way it dumps. It's always going to give me a very stable finish. And it looks like Owen has a look at the pin. I think I think it's actually blind, so she's having to step out. But there is an open alley to the basket. Now Haley has a chance to take yet another stroke. Make it a two-stroke deficit here. And that's huge. I mean, hole number 18... Not necessarily within Owen's reach. So her holes are dwindling to catch Haley if she makes this putt. You can tell the nerves on just Haley's emotions. She just doesn't look happy, but Oliva. Massive putt. Her emotions aren't telling us much either. That was a great putt. You know, in these situations, Val, is it easy to have a smile on your face? I think I'm the wrong person to ask. I was usually smiling, <laughs> regardless of what was happening. Maybe you're trying to send some smiles down their direction. Got it. Haley in for the birdie. She's going to take a two-shot lead. And the friendly camaraderie, Owen giving her bumps. Another cage hit for Evelina. I'm going to say one last thing about Evelina's putt. There are many cases of infielders in Major League Baseball that have had the yips and they have lost their ability to throw to first base. Steve Sachs is a prime example, infielder in the 80s, 
completely lost the ability to throw to fir uh, first base in 83, but six years later became the best second baseman in the league. There is time to salvage. That was for Eagle for Katrina on 15. If anybody can tell you about overcoming situations like that, it's Katrina Allen. I mean, we've seen the putting woes from her over the years, but she managed to fight back, and she's our world champion. Eagle look for Valerie. Nervy throw from Mondahano. But she does have a circle one putt for Birdie. Trying to get back within two of Haley. Hannah Blomroos also putting for Eagle on 15. Just short. Full 15 has given up three eagles today. We saw the huge putt from Kat Merch. 67 feet is what Udisk is calling it. Joining her, Stacey Ronsley and Ella Hansen with just 16 foot drop ins. It's a tough pin to access that's really tucked back into the right. Valerie Mondujano with her ninth birdie of the round. Two shots back of King. And hole 15, it is, you can get an eagle, but you got to get the birdie. We're seeing around 60% of the field getting birdie or better. Allen cashes in the birdie, moves her into a tie for fifth. Ty Ananda taking a double bogey, so she drops to seventh place. Henna in for the birdie. Cat Birch coming off the eagle. Another big putt for Merch. That one for a birdie. Now two under on the round and in 18th place. To be honest, I think I'm going to yeah, it's because I asked my partner if I'm like, okay, I'm like, do you guys care? Yeah. Like, you know, there's Madison and all my best friends, so yeah. I was yeah. like, I'm so bad that I did it. Though. I would give him a minute to clear. So we've got the 390 foot par four coming up here on hole 15 for the lead card. Let's send it down to Terry Miller. Terry could see some fireworks on this hole. We've had some eagle looks already. Well, it seems like we've lost Terry again. He's somewhere in that sea of people. I mean, look at how many spectators were cramming into these wooded holes. Everybody trying to get a look down the fairway to see what they're aiming at. I mean, I can answer the question as well. I mean, this hole doesn't have a lot of danger if you just get it down near the basket, even if you hit one of those guardians. It's not terribly punishing. And look at this drive from Haley. Gonna have a jump putt for Eagle.
gorgeous from Evelina. Edge of the circle, eagle putt coming up. There's just a huge advantage for our distance throwers. The shot's only 390 feet, but that would be max distance for own plus a bonus putt. That's a great shot for her on the left side. It's a pretty wide open putter shot to the basket, taking the birdie. Look at this drive from Evelina, steep hyzer. Pushes all the way back to the right, full flight golf shot down the corridor. You really can't throw it much better than that. Valerie on 16. Gets a friendly tree kick, knocks it down. She should have a putt from circle one. And for Alan and Haley, teammates. It's actually fun to see Jen. After coming off the win, she's out there talking with the group, taking scores. And of course, that gets you inside the ropes to see the action in the front row. Sidearm from Maria puts her inside circle one. <laughs> Scoggins ending up a bit obstructed. Birdie's still very doable. She's had enough practice in this round with this shot specifically. She's been able to save the three prior. And that should work for Owen. About 20 feet. And that's what she needed to do. I mean, knowing Haley's in, in range where she could go for the long run, but it's almost a guaranteed birdie if she gets it through these trees. Still sticks it inside circle one. A bit of tricky footing up against the tree. Maria in for the birdie. That puts her into solo fourth place for the moment. Critical putt for Scoggins. Shift the pressure over to Haley, who looked like she had the advantage with how she was playing this hole. Yeah. Own oh, needs to birdie 16 and 17 if she wants a shot at catching Haley. With that said, 17, anything can happen. For Eagle. That perhaps the most disappointing miss of the round for Salonen. It's 
still cards the birdie. Brings her into a tie for fourth with Oliva. Five shots back of Haley, who has a two-shot lead over Owen Scoggins. Three holes to play. Just so committed. Beautiful form from King all week. I mean, from all stances, she has hands down the best push putt in the division. She's taught herself a spin putt. Just extremely versatile from all over the circle. And she's in a very good spot with three holes left. To 16. That was a birdie look for Valerie Mondahano. She will remain three shots back of Haley. Valerie's just one down in the back nine, and she has cooled off from what a scorching hot start that she had. She's three back, but she's running out of holes. It's going to be tough. Valerie needs to play perfect to be in contention, to be up there, to put pressure on Haley in these final few putts that she'll have. Last time we went to a playoff at a major 2012 U.S. Championship. Katrina defeating Paige. That's all she needs. If she hits fairways the next three holes, it's going to be very hard to catch her. Again, 18, very challenging distance stretching birdie for own. Just one birdie on 18 today. Side rough for Maria. Own needs to get it close. Gets a skip, but she's going to be well outside the circle and perhaps obstructed. We'll see if Haley King can close out her first major championship coming up. One of the values of this is that these AM women in young women, like, you know, people in intermediate or in the age protected division can come out and know that they're playing the same tournament as Paige Pierce, as Katrina Allen, like, as those top players on tour. And I think that being able to see yourself in that position is really important. Feel connected to, you know, the stars of a sport or feel like you can be that person at some point, I think is really important. <laughs> Welcome back to Disc Golf Network's live coverage of the 2022 United States Women's Disc Golf Championship. Own Scoggins two shots back of Haley King. Out of position here for the birdie on 16. It's a good out, but Haley is in perfect position to, at minimum, get a par and hold on to that two-shot lead. But she does have a clean look to extend that lead by one. Let's see how she wants to run this. Oh. The Wisconsinite 
with the support of the crowd, can't quite get it to go, but she will maintain that two-shot lead with two holes to play. And it's really not the timing yet to lay up those putts. She needs to keep pushing forward. Anything could happen with nerves ramping up in these final few holes. Oliva's birdie putt low. You know, her chances are starting to dwindle to make the comeback, but she's doing fantastic. And Haley looking nice, nice and relaxed. misses left side today. I was watching in another camera angle of just the focus that Evelina is still putting forth for each of these putts. You know, she doesn't look like she's just completely given up. She is getting herself in position, going through her routine. There's just a mental block today. And just think of how frustrating this is for such an incredible player. I mean, the drives have been on point. All the hard work to get down the fairways have just been incredible. If you can't make it in the basket, you're just not gonna be able to win. Haley King takes the par, as does Own. Haley two-shot lead going to 17 where she had one of the best shots of the tournament yesterday. Let's take a look at 17, Valerie Mondahano. And a beautiful, just flat to Heiser backhand. That's exactly where you want to put the disc. Not necessarily an eagle look, but she can easily get up and down for birdie here. Just shows you how long this hole still is. It plays uphill a little bit even. take a look at hole 17. I mean this, this tree that we're passing right now kind of defines the shot that you have to throw. It's very direct. You have to play it through this right side and let it kind of crash off to the left. Just showing how impressive the eagle that Haley King truly was. Look at the gaps you have to hit to get up to the green here. It's only 459 feet but it is a daunting technical par 4. Sayananda throwing her second shot. Decent pitch out from where she was at. Still a ways to go to the basket. And a hole 17 with its length forces players to throw those fast speed drivers. To 18, the Estonian Katie Alsalu. <laughs> left it way left. in a backup for the lead card on 17 as the chase card finishes up from the fairway. And I was talking about the distance drivers that the players are throwing. Look at the ground that they have on this fairway. It is very skippy. So if you don't throw it nice and flat, you could go sailing into the rough on either side. And a fast speed driver, it it limits the amount of accuracy you can get when you throw through these trees. Sayananda trying to get her third straight top 10 finish at a major. She was ninth last year at the US Women's Championship and eighth 
at the 2021 World Championships. And Sai is a name that we should all recognize when she comes out to tournaments. She's from Spokane, Washington, and she's a very strong player here in the Pacific Northwest. But when she can get out and play at big events like this, she makes a name for herself. So I know we'll see her again in the ranks. Henna Blomroos currently in eighth place. Tied with the young Aria Castorita. Shot an eight under today. Great final round for the junior under 15 world champion. And I, I can't help to think, I mean, that's the age where I originally met Henna and Evelina when I traveled over to Europe. And to see them sticking with the sport, you know, winning big events, being in those positions, it's so cool to see the future generations looking so promising. Top rated European player and top rated player in the world, Kristen Tatar, not playing this weekend contracting COVID-19 before the preserve, skipping the trip over to the United States. She should be back in action at the European Open, the next major coming up in a couple of weeks. Nice up for Katrina Allen. She'll have a birdie putt from circle one. Hannah will have a tap in par, good scramble. What a gallery. This group following the chase card. This is really giving us an opportunity to see what the teeth of hole 17. You know, we saw Haley yesterday within 50 feet of the basket, hitting the eagle, just making it look so easy. But the strokes can add up if you don't hit the line. So even though Haley's got really good vibes going into this hole, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the tee shots for our lead card. Valerie. Trailing by three shots, has this for Eagle. Definitely trying to throw that in and ends up leaving it at about 30 feet long. She'll have that for birdie. And as I'm thinking of these last two holes on the course, I mean, 18 doesn't it's not that challenging of a tee shot. It's a hard to get birdie as we've talked about. So getting a par is reasonable for most of the field, but it's 17. This is the last hurdle that our players need to get over. The tee shot, if it's clean, they can take a big deep breath that they've got over the biggest obstacle left for them in this round. Well, Valerie needs this to have any hope of catching King and Scoggins. Good clean putt from Valerie Mondahano. She moves to 28 under into a tie for second place.
Katrina. In for birdie and into a tie for fourth with Maria Oliva. Sayananda takes the bogey and drops into a tie for eighth. Our, our chase card has done some work today, put in some solid rounds to move themselves up into the leaderboard, but the holes have run out for any of them to, uh, for me to say confidently that any of them are in competition to win it. At this point, it's Haley's tournament to lose. That's a matter of own putting any kind of pressure on Haley. Essentially, if she can just hit this fairway, if she can just avoid a nasty roll bounce off to the left side and just get this to land on the pine straw in the middle. And here's the thing, Brian. We know that Haley played aggressive yesterday. She threw the big shot to go for the eagle. Do you think she's going to change up the game plan? Well, you look at the gaps that she had to hit watching the drone fly through. Those are some really tight gaps, and you can't necessarily at that distance intentionally hit one of those gaps. You can hit the first three, 350 in the open, but once you get to those late guardian trees, it's a bit of a dice roll, so we'll see if she's going to do anything different, but that looks like the same driver as yesterday. Actually a decent roll bounce. Pushed her forward at least a little bit. Kicks her off to the left side of the fairway. We'll have to see where her lie is. Birdie still in play if she's got to look up the fairway. Not a bad shot. So now thinking of own and how she has to attack these final two holes, she's got to be thinking birdie birdie if she wants to win. It's a beautiful spot there for own. Good positioning to reach the basket on her next shot. Drive gets knocked down as well, so no eagle looks for the lead card. But how about Haley King today? Fighting through some mistakes to give herself a two-shot lead here heading into the second shots on 17. She's just stayed resilient all week. She's made mistakes. She hasn't snowballed too much. She's putted very well from this distance in early circle two. She's given herself a ton of chances to make birdies on some of these shorter holes and she hasn't bled too much. Even with three bogeys, she still rattled off four birdies after that. And she's still going. Got the back-to-back -back birdies on 14 and 15. She's three under in the back nine. And you can see the stats from this week. Very strong across the board. To 18. Valerie Mondahano trailing by two strokes. You gotta be thinking ace. I don't know if anybody's ever really thinking ace, Charlie, but I think a birdie would be what Valerie needs to feel solid about the effort that she put forward today. But that'd be an epic ace to finish the round. <laughs> I mean, you never know. If you're playing for first place, that's all she could have really done at that point to put her at 30 under par. But that's a tall order, that's for sure. 
Valerie Mondahano going seven under in the front nine with seven straight birdies. But only one under in the back. So this is just, this not horrible. She got a huge kick from the right all the way to the left hand side, but she has clean footing. She has all the arm swings she could need for whatever shot she chooses on her second. It's just a matter of hitting the shot. Hmm, well. The door swings open for the opportunity for Own to make something happen, but it is just a wall of trees to fight through to the pin. She's had some okay. incredible scramble shots earlier in the round. Yeah, and this might be one of the least difficult ones that she's had all day, but the most pressure. It's a very tight angle. She either has to go that panning forehand again or a hyzer off to the left. Catches a tree. <laughs> and without some heroics or a big mistake from Haley, she is poised to take down her first major title. Oh, uh, okay. No, I think it's gone. Haley King knows what it's like to win a big tournament. She won four. Elite Series events in 2021 after winning the 2020 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship and a $20,000 purse. But the youngster still no majors to her name. Look at this life for Maria. She snuck all the way through the tree line. This is jail. Another tough pitch out. Charlie talked about how strong of a performance Haley had last year and the year before that. She was looking so strong as a new player on the Disc Golf Pro Tour, committing her time to the touring lifestyle. She's made big moves in the off season. She's changed disc sponsors she's moved to a different state and Haley King hasn't come out and played too many tournaments this year of the six disc golf pro tour events that she's played she has yet to finish on the podium so she has struggled this year to put together a solid tournament and this is the chance and you know my my thing about how few tournaments she's played this year she used to be an injury-laden athlete. She was always dealing with some sort of shoulder problem. So the rest that she's taken, not just mentally for her mental health, but for her shoulder's sake, I think is another reason why she's finally coming out here with some focus and the body's allowed to do what it's supposed to do. Great recovery here from Maria. Players are just sprayed across the fairway. Nobody knows who's out or where they're at. Haley just needs to get up and down. That'll do it.
Scoggins. So close. Exactly. Knows how important that was. Yeah, she goes, I needed that. I needed that. And yes, you did own. Great to see her being aware of the situation and running at a putt of that distance. Evelina will take a bogey. She will remain in sixth place. What a battle between Haley King and Owen Scoggins today. Traded the lead four times during this round. But Owen two shots back going into 18. Maria Oliva remains tied for fourth. Haley King tapping in to stay at 30 under, heading into 18. Let's go to the 18th green. Valerie Mondahano trying to hit the long range birdie putt to give herself a shot. She is deep inside circle two. Got it. She goes into the clubhouse at 29 under, just one shot back of Haley King. Wow. And Valor Manuhado ties up the hot round that we've seen out here at Elver Park, giving it everything she's got till the very last putt. That's a sign of a champion. We'll see what Haley King can do. Not likely a bogey is in the future. It's a pretty wide open tee shot, but who knows what nerves can do. Valerie Mondujano has given herself an excellent chance. Now Owen Scoggins needs a birdie to get a share of second place. What a furious push from Valerie off the chase card. One more time. From 60 feet. We have only seen two other birdies on this hole from the field today, but none at that distance. Beautiful shot from Valerie. And if I'm looking at the stats, I mean, 4% of the field getting birdie on this hole, 14% getting bogey, but the huge majority are carding par. So that's looking good for Haley. And all she really needs to do as we watch the drone fly over is just crash a hyzer down the hill off to the left side, lay up, and that's going to be game over for her, but she has to play perfect. She has to execute her game plan still because of the huge circle two put by Valerie. No player in the top 50 has bogeyed 18 today. She's going big hyzer over the right side. It's clean. That's it. Simple up and down. We'll win this tournament and the first major championship for Haley King. That is pushing way off to the left side. Crashes one into the spectators, inbounds.
Not a bad effort by Own. Own can throw that in for Birdie. She can tie it up to regain that second place position. the safe zone over there. You're 70 feet away from the basket. You can give it a run if you want to. But there's just no issues with that. And it really came down to just a clean tee shot for Haley. It wasn't perfect. You could tell by her body language. But it's a good start to this hole. Again, like you said, Charlie, just an up and down will get her the win. We have seen the pressure, though, of even a simple shot be very difficult to execute in the final round of a major. Think back to the 2021 World Championships, Paige Pierce had a short approach and went out of bounds, ended up losing to Katrina Allen. No OB to speak of here on 18, but Owen Scoggins in position for a possible birdie. Valerie Mondahano in the clubhouse at 29 under. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, but nerves can be the craziest thing. I mean, as simple as a shot can be, when nerves start to creep in, you almost can't control what your brain is telling your hand to do. So even though this is a very simple shot, Haley's going to have to fight through the nerves of winning her first major title to just put it underneath the pin. Yeah, this little shot is going to have to take a lot of her focus. Cannot take this short shot for granted. You want to stick it in the bullseye. You don't want to have to have a 15, 20 footer to take this down. And with her hometown crowd circling the pin, she's the favorite among this cheese curd loving group of people. And can you blame them? I mean, who isn't a cheese for loving people? Hopefully Terry Miller will send us out some <laughs> after the round. Yet again, a promising performance for Maria Oliva. She continues to climb. Her skill set continues to improve and round itself off. We could very well see her on the podium yet again. And Haley sticks it close. You hear the roar of the crowd. Simple jump putt under the basket. Evelina gets it close as well. Own Scoggins trying to get a share of second place. Oh, come on, Bean. <laughs> I need this. What a great performance from Owen Scoggins. <laughs> Evelina finishing in sixth. Scoggins takes third. Maria Oliva tied for fourth. And Haley King is the 2022 United States champion. Her first major title.
54 for the round. And Maria? Three. And at 56 for the round. Confirm? Can you say the numbers again? 55 for Haley. Evelina, 60. Owen, 54. And Maria, 56. All good. Do you all agree? Yeah. Players, good. Carter, confirm? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, it has right. been confirmed. You're 2022. Disc Golf Championships, presented by Innova in your FPO category, Haley King. Joining us now is our champion, Haley King. And Haley, first of all, tell us what it means to take down your first ever major. I'm not good with words. Um, it, it means the world to me, yeah. I'll talk for you for just a moment, Haley, because when I met you, it was six years ago. You came and played in a C tier here in Wisconsin. Of course you won that. Then you went on and dominated six other divisions that year. And the next year, you were already playing professional. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it because you've been a very special competitor from day number one. What is it like winning here in your home state with so many people around? It, it feels amazing, just what you just said, to play one of my first AM events here and to, to win my first major here it just it means the world. You recently moved away to North Carolina, but you knew when you came back, you'd be playing in your home state. We've seen friends, we've seen family. You're playing with some of your favorite people on this card even. Talk about what that's like to share this moment with them as well. It's, I mean, having Maria play on the card every day, almost every day, and then Owen and Evelina, it just, we were all shooting so hot and we just kept each other pushing. So, I mean, I'm surprised Val, that was crazy. Um, but it's just amazing to finally do it, I guess, yeah. Just before you guys teed off, Owen underneath the tent was saying, I don't care who wins, but it better be someone from this card. You shot the nine under yesterday. Talk about the momentum and what that meant coming into today. Uh, I definitely had a lot of momentum, but I just tried to, whatever I did, I just tried to make sure that I just kept the thought that this is the first round, that there's more rounds to do, and it worked. You've said it before, you you don't have a lot of words necessarily, but I know the entire world is watching. Anything you want to say to all your fans and supporters out there? I want to give a huge shout out to my grandma Jane and my grandma Claire that are watching back home, and to my siblings. I finally did it, and thank you everyone for the support. Shout out to Innova. It was huge to have them sponsoring me this year and just continuously pushing me this wouldn't have been doable without them so just thanks to everyone she said it folks haley king your champion here in madison wisconsin back to you guys Jesus Christ. Oh, what a performance haley. from haley king as she claims her first major title and even though it's not been the best start to a season for her Still, Val, we know that she has the potential to be an all-time great player in this division, and I think we saw a lot of that on display this week. And she needs moments and experiences like this to kind of prove to herself that she is one of the best. She is extremely talented and one of the best and most skillful players we've ever seen. It's just a matter of Haley King telling herself she can do it. And I love to see the emotion coming forward out of Haley, who we typically don't see a ton of. You, you can see that this means the world to her. Brian, we know that Haley has all the tools. What made the difference for her this week relative to what we've seen earlier this season? 
Well, we heard it yesterday in her post-round interview. She was feeling something going into these rounds. She was feeling the butterflies. She was feeling the nerves. And great athletes know how to take those emotions and channel them into focus. And she did that. She looked so under control. Even when she took bogeys out there, she was calm. She was level-headed. She didn't snowball. She followed those up with birdies. That's the side of Haley King that needs to continue and the way that continues is you have to continue to put yourself in these situations with a fresh mindset. And for her, that means taking some tournaments off this year. That means resting, moving, living with her siblings, and spending more time with the people she loves. Tour life is grueling. Val has been out there for forever. So it's just finding how this whole career path works for you individually. And it looks like at least for this tournament, she found the, the recipe. Four wins in 2021 for Haley King, just one so far in 2022, but maybe the most meaningful of her career so far. More to come after this. What do I love about disc golf? Same thing we all love. Sound of the chain. I love that you can play on a course or make up your own. My favorite thing about disc golf is challenging myself every time I step onto a course. What do I love disc golf? It gives me the chance to connect with an incredible community and throw some pretty amazing discs. Because after all, pig is love, pig is life. I love disc golf because you can be as creative as you want with this sport. I'm not to be underestimated. Like, I'm really not. I've got something to prove. I'm literally gonna be one of the best in the world. It's as simple as that. Don't underestimate me. That was rad. This is Latitude 64, the smallest of grains handled with the greatest passion. Always trying to improve, always trying to be better. Out of curiosity, excitement, thrill. For the player and the sport. Because we want to make disc golf awesome for you. Haley King may have won this major, but it was not without a push from some other players. None other than Valerie Mondahano getting within one stroke with an impressive nine under par performance from the chase card. We're going to send it to Valerie Mondahano right now, who's standing by with the PDGA's Grant Zellner. Valerie Mondahano, the hot round of the day at nine under par. Fell a little bit short of Haley today, but talk about what it's like to shoot that well in front of a gallery like this at a major. Honestly, I'm still kind of processing it. So right now I'm kind of just like in the bitter phase of not fully executing the plan, which was 12 down. But it felt good, you know, to hear the screams and the cheers. And it was, uh, it was amazing to see how much support disc golf has gotten, but not only disc golf, but the women's field alone. Multiple groups up there in the woods with large galleries following them. You heard the roars back and forth across the hillside. Is that invigorating? Is that distracting? What is that like in terms of trying to stay focused? It's a little distracting. Um, there were some shots where we're all lining up or mid-throw you just hear a huge roar and you're just like, I even made a comment at one time, I was putting 
and the crowd just roars and I'm like that had better been an ace somebody have better ace right now but it's all good um, it just shows how much progress we have of disc golf you got a chance to wrap up your round with a 60 foot throw in for birdie on the last hole one of very few birdies carded on that hole today and you did it in front of the largest gallery on the entire hillside is that something that you'll take away from this as a sweet moment despite coming up just a little bit short for sure I mean it was a definitely bittersweet moment for me just because excuse me um, I made the putt which was amazing and I also got you know the crowd going which made the putt even better because it sorry <laughs> <laughs> it made it uh, that much sweeter again just fell up short but it definitely was inspiring to see how much the crowd did cheer for me. Even the bugs enjoy Valerie Mondohano's <laughs> game. You're a staple at the top. Congratulations on your finish today. Thank you. Well, what a performance from Valerie Mondohano. Shooting a nine under with two bogeys. She said she wanted to shoot a 12 down. I mean, it was very close. There were a couple of small mistakes. Remember back when she tried to run it from distance and then didn't make the comebacker? You think what could have been? That was the one real decision-making error I felt like she made in the course. And again, we don't know what her true intention was behind the shot, but that green on 10, we saw multiple times suck uh, disc back into the corner outside of circle one, and it happened multiple times. And had she just laid up to the front, who would have known? But when you're on a seven-hole seven birdie streak, it's kind of hard not to run the basket. Yeah, she was a heat check if you will. And, you know, you think about Valerie, she's had such a great season so far, already two Elite Series wins. To make a push like this on the final day from the chase card when you're way back and, you you know, you might think about just trying to play for positioning, what does that tell you about her game and her ability moving forward? Yeah, it's huge for us to see a player like Valerie who we know she's won in the amateur ranks. She's now playing pro she was hanging middle of the pack in the first couple of seasons, and then, boom, that first big win at Waco. That's that's a hurdle that players have to get over, and once you have those wins, that's when you start to learn about your game, and you can start to dial in certain other aspects besides just the, the nerves that you get when you're on top. And we've seen Valerie hit some clutch shots, like this fantastic upshot at Waco that sealed the win for her first Elite Series win. And that shot is some, it's a shot, I didn't throw it, but it's a shot I will never forget. That was so clutch for Valerie to win her biggest event to date at that point. She has just turned into such a shot maker and a shot shaper with the backhand. She's got the power, but the way she can work the disc, any speed, she has really shown some poise this year, and the putt has been gorgeous. The jumper from early circle two shined this weekend. A couple mistakes down the stretch cost her the victory. Just so close to pulling it off in the final round. We're going to get some more from Haley King coming up in just a little bit, along with the OTB After Show. Don't go anywhere. I would recommend the Envy to every single person that plays this golf. This is such a good throwing putter. If you don't have an Envy in your bag, I don't know what you're doing. The Envy is one of the most pure, straight flying putters. It comes out clean, can handle power, it can handle touch. It's just very versatile. It holds any line that you're really putting it on. It's so good. So good! It's so good. Eight avocado, take seven. Action. And cut, perfect. 
Perfect. That's a wrap, everyone. Fierce and passion, like those are the two things that I am on the course. You hit a tree, scramble. Get back in the circle, get apart. It's a pretty look, but it's a long one. What a make. Don't forget about me, I'm here. I'm here and I'm staying for a while. Haley King. The 2022 U.S. Women's Champion, and she is standing by with the PDGA's Grant Zeller in the clubhouse. Let's send it down to Haley. With Haley King, your 2022 PDJ U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship, or Disc Golf Champion. Have you said that to yourself and done a better job than I just did? Has it sunk in even a little bit in the last five minutes? Honestly, no, but this morning when I woke up, I could not get the thought of me winning out of my head and I was just trying so hard to just calm my mind and like, I just had a feeling when I woke up this morning that I was gonna take it down, so. We mentioned this a little bit before, up there in the woods, several groups with large galleries, lots of cheering going on back and forth across the hillside. And on top of that, we've got the locals out here in Wisconsin celebrating the 4th of July a little bit early, fireworks going off. Did you find that was almost a good distraction for you in terms of your mind, or was that a distraction you had to overcome all the way? I mean, I wouldn't say it was like a distraction at all. I don't get bothered by that stuff. Like you would have to run right in front of the basket and stop there in order for me to get distracted. So yeah. As you played into this final round, you were lurking after day number one, moving up just a little bit, it seemed each and every day. Did you feel like your game was building over the course of the week? And did you do anything during the evenings that you feel like helped that out? Oh yeah, uh, my, day, my game definitely it started off pretty good and then I started to slow down. Like today, I was pretty sloppy on the disc golf course, uh, had a lot of shanks, but uh, these every, probably for like the last two weeks, I've been using like those leg, I don't even know what they're called, <laughs> leg things and with my arms as well. And I've just been stretching probably like three hours total a day. At, but when I wake up midday, before I start my round, after the round, all that stuff. So. That definitely helped, and having Seth there to, you know, just text and ask questions about what my body is doing, it really helped and allowed me to just think clearly. You did have a little bit of an awkward, we'll say, front nine. A couple of birdies, then bogey, birdie, bogey, and on and so forth through the front nine. Was there ever a point in your round where you stopped and had a conversation with yourself? And obviously it helped you went bogey free in the back nine. Was there ever a point when you had to stop and remind yourself of a few things? Uh, Honestly, I had to remind myself the whole entire round to just <laughs> keep it cool. If you keep it cool, it's going to go your way and fold it off. <laughs> the queen is a king, Haley King, your national champion. Thank you. So Haley King woke up this morning thinking about becoming a major champion. Brian, I want to hear your thoughts on that. You know, I... I 
walked with Haley last year when she was on the lead card at the World Championships in Utah, and that was the same conversation that we had. You know, the night before the final round, she was very nervous, but she knew that she had to wake up, and this was her first first chance to really get this opportunity to wake up feeling like she could be a champion. And again, we've talked about it time and time again. That type of pressure builds champions, and you have to keep putting yourself in those situations. So even though she fell short last year, she knows how to approach these situations again and now automatically knows that she has to wake up believing that she can win. And now we're hearing she can take care of her body and she's stretching and she's recovering. These are all the things that athletes like her need to start prioritizing more. And we've had a lot of conversations about this. The PDGA announcing uh, about an hour ago that the payout would be $7,000 for Haley King taking down first place. Val, you obviously won a lot of majors in your day. Do you remember what it was like after you won your first one? Did that change anything about the trajectory of your career, or the way you thought about the game of disc golf? It's the hardest thing to do to win your first, whether it's your first C tier, your first A tier, your first major. But once you can, once you know that feeling, once you know that you can do it, and you've executed the shots, but more importantly, had that positive talk in your mind to push yourself through and come out as the winner in the very end, that is what grows champions. And now Haley King knows she can do it, and that only builds the confidence leading her into the next one. I mean, think of the big tournaments. If she can continue to stay calm and confident like we've seen her do in the in this event, sticking with it, staying in the conversation. Haley King, she's now one that we'll be looking at when we head into Worlds. Yeah, I mean, this completely turns around her season from mm -hmm. struggles to a very impressive, you know, averaging nearly a 1,000 rated rounds this weekend. So let's look at the rest of the top 10. I mean, Owen Scoggins puts together a phenomenal effort, just couldn't quite get enough birdies today to keep it all the way tight with Haley late. But, I mean, what a performance from one of the veterans of the division. It could have swung either way today. That's the exciting part of it. Own had so many opportunities to take strokes on Haley, but they seemed to make mistakes at about the same time. And I think that kind of stuff is destined to happen when you're coming down the stretch with somebody. We are inside the OTB After Show, so you, thank you for being with us. Uh, what else st stands out to you from the top 10, Val? We knew going into this final round, Katrina Allen, Valerie Manohano sitting at the top of our chase card. I was going to put money that giving them just 18 holes to make a charge at the lead. We talked about their experiences and what they have at big events. I knew something was going to happen. I wasn't sure which player it was going to be, but Valerie quickly made it happen and it was from the start she was off firing with the shots and it was big putts but it was also very accurate drives from Valerie and I was expecting her to see her perform really well last weekend at the preserve and it, things just fell flat so she stuck with it all four rounds she wasn't ever on her lead card but she was right there in the hunt and it she just needed that one breakthrough round and Sadly, she saved it for the last one, but to come within one stroke of winning her first major in her best performing FPO year, I mean, it's outstanding to see a comeback like that. Yeah, and so many storylines. You know, we saw Evelina Salonen have so much success this weekend, looking great on the putting green for the first three rounds. She still was throwing the disc great today. I mean, may, may, maybe the best that we saw at the tournament, just snapping it out of her hand off the tee but the putter just wasn't there today. I think, again, we look back at the previous three rounds, that is progress. That is absolute progress. And when you're still kind of struggling with your putt, especially under pressure, it's expected that it was going to be like that today. But the fact that she was able to rattle off three rounds, putting over 80%, I think she should at least, after this all settles down, be proud of, of what she did this weekend. She played fantastic. Aria Castorita climbing eight spots into a top 10 finish at a major, just still a teenager. I mean, we're talking about somebody who's going to be the next big thing. 
and we're already seeing her competing at the highest levels. We heard Haley in an interview, uh, or when, when we were talking to Terry Miller on the course, talk about how she was able to see herself competing with the top players from a young age, and that gave her the confidence to go pro. Maybe we're seeing the seeds of a next future major champion in Aria Castorita. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, these players, they had an opportunity to come to an event, be here in person, uh, compete with the toughest competition that there is in the world. I mean, let's talk about the numbers. I mean, 89 competitors in the open division, 318 in the overall event. That's across 19 different divisions. So it's just incredible to see that many female competitors coming to one spot to put it all on the line to win a major title of their own and a 15 year old competing in the open division and she had a chance i mean this is such an incredible performance for her and a confidence builder and i can't wait to see more from her and all our young competitors the top finisher the lynn's twins who just competed in the amateur world championships last weekend it's exciting, and I can't wait to see. We've had young competitors here on the lead card all weekend, but there's plenty of them in this division. So we're going to hear those names more often. I mean, Maria Oliva among them. I mean, what uh, for two rounds, Maria Oliva was the best player at this tournament. And frankly, she played great down the stretch today. Ended up going uh, four under over the final, like, after hole three, right? She had the couple early bogeys, kind of took her out of it, Brian. But I think we really saw Maria look like she's got the potential to be an elite series winner. I mean, I've seen this the moment I started seeing her throw a disc and Valerie could probably attest to this as well. I knew she had an elite arm. I knew she had really nice angles and she has that really powerful spin putt. Her skill set is absolutely considered elite among the rest of the FPO field. But is it really expected to take down your first major, your very first year on tour? I mean, time is the best tell to see who's going to outlast the road life. It's not easy to be on the road for an extended period of time. And you have to keep finding meaning and purpose and grinding it out, trying to beat the rest of this field. I have no doubts that we'll see Maria here again and again and again. Sayananda getting her third straight top 10 finish at a major in FPO. So many stories to pay attention to this week, and maybe none other than how big of a tournament this was and the growth of FPO. This tournament, more than double the size it was two years ago, just in the FPO division alone. So that's going to bring us to our OTB shot of the day. Let's take a look. And it may have been in a losing effort, but Valerie Mondahano on 18. That is every bit of a win outside of taking the tournament down. Finishing like that, that proves that Valerie is also elite, and she is no longer an underdog anymore. So keep in touch with all of the live action this year on the Disc Golf Network. Valerie Mondahano and Haley King will be back in action at the LWS Open at Idlewild, which is coming up in just five days. Live coverage, of course. Available to DGN subscribers with the final round on YouTube. And then European action coming your way. Thank you so much for being with us this week. And congratulations again to Haley King for winning her first major championship. That is going to do it for our broadcast here on the Disc Golf Network. For Brian Earhart and Valerie Jenkins, I'm Charlie Eisenhood signing off for our crew. Thanks to our producer, Mahmoud Barani, our director, Ian Lunger, and the rest of our fantastic crew. That's going to do it for our coverage of the 2022 U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championships. We'll see you soon.